is literally the first time ever that I'm ever going to let anyone call me a basic white girl. Me with my scarf getting in like the spooky season with my Starbucks. No, 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 no. And when you live in the middle of the desert, it's very important that you stay hydrated. Welcome back. I'm back with some more scary stories. Good, I hope you were scared by whatever that was. Today is gonna be a little different. Instead of reading like scary, scary stories, we're gonna be reading scary stories about people. So I really don't wanna read these. I am, ugh. So this one is called, do I really wanna read this? Yeah, why not? My brother saw a ghost as a kid. Two decades later, I realized what he actually saw. No thank you, I'm good. I should just call this the no thanks series. Cause it's just a lot of like, no thanks, I'm good. I'm good. I was about seven years old, my brother about 10. It was well past our bedtime when our mom woke up off the couch to put us to bed. Our dad worked construction out of town back then, so it was often just the three of us at the house weeks at a time. Up the stairs and to the immediate right was our parents' bedroom. Going left put you in the middle of the hallway. Taking another left down the hallway led to my brother's room. The opposite end was my room, which was also across the hall from our upstairs bathroom. At either end of the hallway, our window doors we always kept locked and rarely used. The door on my end led to a balcony overlooking our front yard. And the other door on my brother's end opened to our back porch. The house kind of leads into a small hill. My brother and my mom both had a bad habit of waking up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. I only knew this because I was always a late sleeper and they just couldn't help flushing with the door wide open. This night, however, my brother stopped on his way to his room and came back towards the bathroom. I'm gonna try to pee before I go to bed. The past few nights, I've been too afraid to walk to the bathroom. I keep seeing a man wearing stripes at the end of the hallway. I don't know if my mom wrote it off as my brother telling ghost stories to try to scare me or if she was already half asleep and didn't catch it, but she didn't react at all to my brother's confession. I, on the other hand, was terrified by it. Don't blame you. The fear of seeing a ghost like that at the end of the hallway or through the windows is the reason I started running from the stairs to my bedroom at night. Uh, I get that. I, I, feel, I feel that. Years later, when I was about 18, my mom and I were having a conversation in her car about a dog we had for a very short time when I was little. We were sharing stories about Max's tendency toward a towards destroying my shoes and other unruly behaviors when my mom blurted out, do you remember that time I opened the front door to the cops and Max ran inside of the kitchen and started tearing up the big bad dog food we had? This literally caught me by surprise because in all the years I lived in that house, we never once called the cops. Gun owner family in a quiet, rural West Virginia neighborhood, etc. I asked her what she was talking about and she looked equally surprised as if she had just revealed something by accident. Oh, that's right. I never told you because you were too young at the time. One night, I woke up hearing noises outside my window, and when I looked, I saw a man staring into my bedroom. She went on to describe how turning on the lights caused him to take off running and how she grabbed my dad's pistol before calling the cops. I can't remember all the details. I gave them when they showed up. Tall white male wearing a striped shirt and jeans. Short dark hair, something like that. They said it matched the description of a man they were looking for in the area. It turns out he had escaped from jail on a murder charge. I do wow. I just realized it and that's scary. <laughs> now I know it sounds so obvious hearing two stories back to back, but it wasn't until a few years ago in my mid twenties that I pieced together that my brother had unknowingly warned us about a murderer who spent multiple nights casing our home. I was not expecting that. What? What? Did I just read? I am sorry, but wow. See, people are scary things, okay? They're terrifying things. Okay, this next one is called Always Change Your Locks When You Buy a New House. I feel like everyone should already know to do that. 
So this happened in 2013 and I was 17. My family was looking at this house and the owner showed up and talked with my parents. Seemed like a nice older man built the house himself. It's a pretty nice two-story house overlooking a river. Anyway, I was standing back watching everyone talk and as the owner is talking and laughing, there is a break in the conversation where he turns away from my parents and his expression completely and instantly changes from happy to the most sinister and hateful scowl I've ever seen. I don't think he noticed me watching. I probably appeared to be on my phone as my head was down. As soon as he turned back, he instantly went back to smiling. It was so creepy and honestly made me feel sick. I told my mom who said it was weird, but maybe sh he's just awkward. So we got the house. We moved in and the next weekend my family is going to church and I didn't feel like going. So they all leave me home alone. So it's Sunday morning about 11 a.m. when I hear really loud banging outside. It's rhythmic and coming from the side of the house. I was on the other side of the house on the second floor. Honestly, I thought it was maybe the wind. It was a stormy day that day and I didn't think much of it. It stopped after about five minutes. Ten minutes later, I hear walking around downstairs, chairs moving, kitchen cabinets opening, and the fridge opening. Okay. I immediately, quietly go lock my door, grab my baseball bat, and call 911. While I tell them my address, I text my mom and tell her that someone is in the house and that I called 911. At that point, the 911 operator said that someone was about 10 minutes out. I tell her, shh, because I heard steps walking towards the stairs. Basically, the house is so thin, I could track where he was in the house. At this time, my mom responded that she's on her way. She's 30 minutes away. So here is a 17-year-old, 5'2", 100-pound girl hunkered in her bedroom, full well knowing that if he came in, he'd overpower me and take the bat. I was terrified. My heart would be racing so bad, like my hands are getting sweaty just thinking about it. I heard him walk down the hallway towards my door. I saw, <laughs> I saw the handle turn and stop. It was locked. I got chills. <laughs> and I heard him stand there. He didn't move. I could hear his breathing. It felt like forever, but really I think it was about 10 seconds. I heard him turn and go back down. I heard the back door open and shut. And about three minutes later, of course, of course, it's three minutes later, the police pulled up. The 911 operator asked me if I could let them in or if they needed to force it. I knew he had left, so I let them in. No one was there, no sign of forced entry, nothing. When my mom got there, she looked at my stepdad and asked if he had changed the locks. He hadn't. I think the creepiest part and what really validated my story was that my mom had just vacuumed the hallway and there were shoe prints that were larger than anyone in our house, and the police hadn't been up there, and they stopped just outside of my room. Please don't forget to change your locks. Okay, this next one is kind of long, but it has a photo, which I'm really excited about because it's really, really weird and creepy to like think about, but it has a photo, so I will insert it at the end or like whenever it's like mentioned. This next one is called Florida woman crawled out of my hotel mirror to rob me. Not even hotels are safe because there's still crazy people. People are freaking creepy. I'm telling you, they are creepy. This past Monday, my coworkers and I returned to our hotel from a day of work out in the field. We walked to our rooms and as we stood outside of our rooms, I opened mine and saw someone in the bathroom. I said, hello? Nobody answered. My first instinct was that it was the cleaning lady in there for some reason. And then I saw my bag with my clothes in her hands. What? I said to my coworker, there's a woman in my room. Then I asked the woman, what are you doing with my stuff? It gets a little fuzzy here because I can't remember everything I said and what she said, but she kept mumbling about how her key still worked, how it still worked, and that's how she got in. Doesn't mean that you go in. I was in shock and she was obviously very flustered having been caught mid-robbery. 
She dropped my bags and fumbled around with her purse and a white plastic bag. By this time, my coworker was behind me watching all the insanity unfold. This woman was scrambling and walking towards the door and I said, what's in the bag? Thinking it is probably my stuff. So she said, no, no, it's just my things. It's just my things, I'll show you. And so she did. I looked and I didn't see anything of mine. And so, since I'm obviously in shock at the time, I let her leave. I went into my room and it's been ransacked. I did a quick look around to see if anything had been taken. All of my electronics were still there. Then I went into the bathroom and saw my underwear, my bikini, my clothes shoved into my own bags randomly. Even my passport was shoved in there. Then I looked on the counter and saw that she got into my medication. I'm not sure what was going through my head at the moment other than I wanted it back. So I ran out the door to go find her. I ran to the laundry room downstairs and out to the sides of the hotel and didn't see her. I realized I was never going to find her. So my coworker and I went to the lobby to tell them what happened. And then we called the police. We went back to my room to wait. And I noticed that there was a metal bat on my bed, a little larger than one of those novelty wooden bats you can get at a baseball game but there's also a flashlight on the end. She must have left it behind in her hurry. She also left behind a necklace that must have fallen out of her bag when she was scrambling with mine. I was mostly freaking out at this point because I thought she'd gotten away with my medication that I needed. The police got there and took our statements and looked around the room as well. One thing that I noticed was that there were bits of drywall in the sink and I pointed that out to the cops, but none of us really knew where it came from. We started looking at the door and the windows to see if she pried her way in somehow, but there was nothing. So we just kind of went with the idea that she had a spare key or something, even though the hotel front desk was adamant that there's no way that could be. The officer that came brought two more officers as backup because they thought the woman might still be in the vicinity. But after our statements were taken, there was nothing else they could really do, so they left. I sat down to finally make some calls to tell people. And as I'm on the phone, I'm thinking about the drywall in the sink and it still didn't make sense to me. So I'm on the phone and looking at the drywall and the mirror on the wall right above it and then it hit me. I got my coworker and asked her to help me pull this mirror off the wall. And we took the mirror down and there's a hole there just big enough for a desperate junkie to squeeze through. I asked Brian and Rebecca if I should call the cops again to let them know that I had found this and my boss said, there's still two cop cars in the parking lot. So I went down to them and the female cop kind of rolled her eyes, but the young guy said, I'll come check it out. They both came up, looked in the hole and found a pillow, blankets, cigarettes, clothes, toothbrushes. This woman had been living in the wall behind my mirror for God knows how long. She had access to me and my room at all times. I know it might be hard to picture. There was a crawl space about two feet wide in between the two rows of rooms. One of the officers called the original officer to come back and take pictures of this. She explained to him what's going on and all I hear over the phone was, no way. He comes back, takes pictures, and is just as mind blown as the rest of us. Obviously we packed up and left immediately. What's even crazier is she has probably been there a long time. The last time we stayed at this hotel, I would randomly smell cigarette smoke and I assumed someone was smoking in their bathroom and it was traveling through the vents. But nope, a junkie was smoking just on the other side of my mirror. She had access to other rooms too. The holes in the walls were from a renovation and the hotel hadn't properly patched and just covered up with mirrors. She could have been hanging out in people's rooms when they were gone. <laughs> <laughs> Someone commented below, I'll never be able to sleep in a hotel room again without checking the mirrors first. Yeah, same. I will have all of the stories um, linked down below so you can go ahead and read them, read more if you want. Um, and if you have any of your scary stories that you want me to read before the end of October, I will have my Instagram link down below so you can message me those and I will read them here on my channel. So I will see you next time with some more spooky stories.